Welcome everyone to our hackathon project presentation for the Design Safe Academy 2021. Our team's name is Geo Pioneers. And our hackathon project that we would like to present is developing a Jupyter notebook for the calibration of PM4 SAN parameters to the experimental data. Our mentor for the hackathon project is Professor Pedro Ardino from University of Washington. Uh, he provided us the hackathon problem to be solved. Our team members are from different universities all across the country. I'm Kanika Lamba and I'm a PhD student at Iowa State University. Shitaoshi is a PhD student at University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Alan Rivera is a PhD student from University of Puerto Rico and Alham Arjolu is a PhD student from California State University, LA. For the given problem, we are calibrating the constitutive soil model called PM4SAN. Now, constitutive material model describes the mechanical behavior of a material through a set of mathematical equations. And PM4 sand is basically a constitutive model developed at UC Davis for geotechnical earthquake applications and it captures the undrained response of sand or granular material when cyclic loads are applied to it. PM4 sand has a total of 24 set of parameters however to get a general response for this hackathon project we are calibrating three main parameters, namely dr, that is relative density of sand, g0, that is shear modulus coefficient, and rh0, which is contraction rate parameter. For the calibration part, we are using the experimental data from six number of cyclic simple shear tests performed on Ottawa sand F6, F65 material and the relative density for these tests for the sand material ranges from 54 to 65%. Now CSS test that is cyclic simple shear test basically simulates earthquake condition on sand samples by applying cyclic loads on it. From CSS tests, we can plot the hysteresis loops of shear stress versus shear strain and shear stress versus if vertical effective stress. And from these tests, we also get the cyclic shear ratio, that is CSR, and the corresponding number of cycles to uh, achieve liquefaction for a given sand sample at a given relative density. The six sets of experimental data from the cyclic simple shear tests is presented here. From these data, we get six data points for the plot CSR versus the number of cycles to achieve liquefaction. That is over here. So for one experiment, we get one data point for this plot. The next step we perform is simulate the cyclic simple shear tests in open seas. We do this by using 2D element for PM4 sand and we use similar input parameters corresponding to the six CSS experiments example the relative density, vertical effective stress etc to simulate in open seas. From the open sea simulation we get six data points again for the CSR versus the number of cycles for liquefaction plot. So in this plot, in this combined plot, we get, we have both the simulated data from OpenSeas for the CSS experiment as well as the data from the CSS actual experiment. The goal of this project is to reduce the error or the gap between the plotted experimental data 
and the simulated data. And to achieve this, the first step is to get at least 20 data points from the six initial data points of the CSS experiment. Hi, I would like to give a brief introduction about the calibration process in our project. The calibration workflow is shown in the screen. We do the everything in Design Safe platform, including pre and post processing, HPC computing, and the parallel computing. And Design Safe provide different modules to do the to do those stuff. For pre and post processing, we choose to use the Jupyter. And HPC computing, we choose to use the high performance computing Jupyter. And with the packaging of the OpenSys for the parallel computing, we choose to use the TEPIS with stamping to submit the multiple analysis jobs. And here's what are we going to do for the high performance computing? You can see it can generate uh, the analysis results in a very short time. Here in the in the right, it's a it's a it's a GIF to show how it works, and at the left, it is show how it works with the pre-processing. We can do those together for high performance computing. And for the parallel computing, this is another option. For the GUI, you can see in the middle of the screen, we can submit the different jobs to the design safe platform. Here, there are a lot of parallel computing jobs finished. You can see at the, uh, at the right panel of the screenshot, the job status, and there may be some jobs that it's going to be waste some time, yes. And I have to say the disadvantage of this parallel computing job is uh, uh, is uh, spending time in this queuing status. And at the right, uh, it is another disadvantage that you, you, you are required to write a source code to call the different number of processor to help you to do the parallel computing. And this is my part. Hi, I'm Alan Rivera. I will continue with the presentation. Here, I want to give a summary of the results we obtained from the project. At my right, you, you can see the a graph that we already showed you at the beginning. It shows the cyclic step stress ratio in the y-axis, in the x-axis, the number of cycles. Initially, we had only six experimental data points, and we wanted to have 20. So we fit an exponential function. And with the exponential function, we created an, uh, 20 points. Those 20 points, the, the blue dots, are now our experimental data. Then with the, all the models that we simulated in OpenSys, we changed. We, we had different combination of, the, of those three parameters, the relative density, the shear modulus, and the construction rate. And in, on each one of the runs, we calculated the, the error function and we looked for the one that minimizes, the, the combination that minimizes the error. You can see here and at my left the, the, the GIF with the different uh, simulations, different combinations, and how they approach and get, uh, and get to, the, to the black line that is aligned with the experimental data. After that, we wanted to see how each of the parameters influence the, the error function. And we found that the one that had the mo most influence in the minimizing the, the error was the construction rate here at, at the right. The other two parameters, parameters, the relative density and the shear modulus, had a slight, almost no, no influence in the in, in the in the error function. Finally, we uh, looked for the one that uh, give off the least error in the error function, and we got to this 
parameters. The relative density is equal to 0.4, the shear modulus is equal to 400, and the construct, contraction rate equal to 0 0.01. Initially, we wanted to solve this using machine learning, but as the time passed, we decided to, 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 to change the methodology. We used a method we <laughs> call the geo pioneers. We don't have much time to finish method. <laughs> And this one worked for us. And here are the, the, the optimized parameters. In summary, use the Jupyter notebook for the calibration of the PM4 sand parameters. We created plots showing the cyclic stress ratio versus the number of cycle to liquid, liquefaction. We also calibrated the PM4 sand material parameters. We focus on three of them. It was the relative density, the shear modulus, and the construction rate. And based on the calibration results, we found that the construction rate, the HPO, is the most influential parameters in the uh, cyclic set ratio experiment. That's all for this presentation. I want to thank Design Safe for the opportunity they give us to be part of this project and be part of the this first academy was a pleasure. Thanks to you all.